today is Monday, the 29th day of January. Welcome to Life Audio Bible. I'm Edward John. It is great, wonderful to be with you. It really is great and wonderful. Oh man, I can't believe we're embarking on another week already. Time just goes so quickly. Oh, I guess it's because we're having fun, isn't it? Especially I, I love to be in the Word of God with you. And friend, I can't tell you how delighted I am that we're going through the New Testament together. But more than that, we're abiding in the Word of God together on a daily basis. And to those of you who have been with me now for 687 days, uh, which quite a few of you have, a big congratulations. You're doing really well. You've broken every barrier over and over and over again. Uh, on how to create habits in your life and you've definitely created a new habit and that's to be in the word of god so well done and if you're brand new and you've just joined life audio bible from anywhere around the world friend it is awesome it is absolutely awesome to have you on board we're a smaller community you could say we're probably well we're in about 49 nations We're not that small, actually, come to think about it. We're growing every single day, which is amazing, which is what we want to do is just grow and become a larger and larger family and and get some more knowledge in the Word of God. So that's what we're doing. And today, friends, we're going to read Philippians 4, 1 through 23. That's the fourth chapter of Philippians, the final chapter. And it is an amazing chapter. It holds so much So let's dive into it, and I'll do some comments at the end of this read. We're reading from the World English Bible today. Let's read. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Judea, and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord, Yes, I ask, my true companion in the Lord, help these women, since they've contended at my sight in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, With thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except only you. For even when I was in Thessalonia, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment, and I have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epidorphius the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. 
All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. All right, then, let's uh, break this down uh, a little bit. Just do a short little Bible study here Monday, Monday morning. Um, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. All right, what way? Well, everything we've heard Paul say uh, during the weekend, if you listen to Friday's teaching over and over again, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, let's go back and listen to it. But he says, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. All right. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. All right, friend. Here we go. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say to you, yes, I, Edward John, as Paul said, rejoice and let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And then Paul goes on to say, don't be anxious about anything. Okay, so whatever you're going through right now, can I just declare God's scripture over you and the word of the Lord? Do not be anxious about anything. But here's what he says. In every situation, by prayer and petition. So what do we do? When you start getting anxious, you start praying and you make some petitions and you thank the Lord. You present your request to the Lord. And then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? We don't have to be anxious about anything. But I do think, friend, that a good thing to do is whatever you are anxious about. You know, if you go into your room, close the door behind you, the Lord says, uh, you know, when you do that, he will openly display or he will he will answer your prayers and he will show openly that you'll receive what you pray for. So don't be anxious. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. All right. And remember to thank him as well. Now, mindset. Let's talk about our mindset just for a second. Just for a second. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there's anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Okay? Now that's the mindset we ought to have. We think about what's true, what's noble, what's right, what's pure, what's lovely, what's admirable. Anything that's excellent or praiseworthy. That's what we think about. Why? Because that's how we stay happy and strong. (laughs) I mean, come on, guys. We don't watch TV all day long and fill our minds with the wrong things. I'm saying this to all of us now. Come on. You know, we don't worry all day long when the Lord says, don't be anxious about anything. No, we think about what's true, what's noble, what's right, what's pure, what's, what's, what's lovely, what's admirable. Anything that's excellent or praiseworthy, we think about those things and it will change our situation. All right. So, Now that it's Monday, I usually on Mondays say thank you for bringing your gifts to Life Audio Bible at the beginning of the week because we're believing for expansion. We're believing to sow the word. I'm believing for many more people to join us so that we can reach uh, a massive amount of people around the world with the word of God. And it would be wonderful. And I need your help because one takes a thousand. I can do this. Uh, every day and 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 one soul is worth more than the whole world we know that but it would be wonderful wouldn't it if we could reach souls together so if you can as paul says i'm not saying this because i'm in need for i've learned i edward john i've also learned to be content whatever the circumstance i know what it is to be in need and i know what it is to have plenty I've learned the secret of being content in every way, in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet, I'm saying this that you share with me so that it can be credited to your account. See, Paul says, Not that I desire your gifts, and I say that too. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire 
is that more be credited to your account. Now, let's just get a little practical. Let's say you send me $10, okay, to help spread the gospel. Now, as soon as you send me $10, a dollar of the 10, 10%, goes straight to some other ministry through my ministry. So now you've sent $9. Those $9 that I receive from you are used to promote, to set up, to get the equipment, uh, to be able to relax in a little bit different manner than having to stress out the door in the morning early. So rather than devoting myself to what the world wants me to do, I devote myself to the teaching and reading of Scripture. And this way, together, we can grow and be in the Word together daily. But you see, if I only have 10 or 30 who give $10, well, that's a couple of hundred dollars, right? Or a hundred dollars. That doesn't give me enough or us enough to even renew our equipment. So there needs to be many of us standing together or one or two of us who say, you know what, I'm going to give so that there's more than enough. But see, you got to think about what's important for you. I, I can't do that for you. You got to do that. And as for me, I found after about 30 years in ministry that the most important thing I've ever done is this. Read the Word of God. Lives are being changed. Minds are being renewed. The Word of God is being sown. I'm not bringing my own opinions into it. It doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what God says so that we can learn and grow and be in Him more and more. So not that I desire your gifts. What I, de what I desire is that it be credited to your account. So we do have an account in heaven and uh, whatever I give will be accredited to that. Whatever you give will be credited to that account. So I would say it is important as the Holy Spirit leads. All right, friend, in Jesus' mighty name, Father, thank you that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Lord, you give us strength and we thank you for it. And we thank you, Lord, that we also learn to be content in plenty and in need, that we don't worry or that we're not anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, Father, we bring it to you. We present our request to you with thanksgiving. And we know then, Lord, that the peace of you, God, will pass all understanding and will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you uh, that you're with us and we rejoice. Yes, we always rejoice in you, Father, as we stand firm in you. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name, I pray. Amen. Okay, my friend, it is Monday. Go and have a wonderful day and be anxious about nothing nothing just present your requests to the lord with thanksgiving and the peace of god which transcends any understanding will guard your hearts and minds in christ jesus blessings on you <laughs>